Not long ago I built a pottery studio in the barn. It's still a bit of a work in progress. There are plans to add some cabinets with a countertop to use as a workspace, similar to what I put in the shop. Today though I'm going to make some pottery bats. A few weeks ago, if you asked me what a pottery bat was, I would have guessed it was for smashing pottery. Turns out that a pottery bat is a circular piece of wood that you can attach to a potter's wheel. When you've shaped your clay, you can take it off the wheel and set it aside to dry for a while. The clay is easier to remove from the bat when it's a little dry. Whereas if you try to take really wet clay off the wheel, you can end up deforming the piece. This project finally gave me a chance to use my new circle jig for the bandsaw. I'll add a link on the screen for that if you want to see how that's made. But before I could do any of that, I needed to make a template. To make it easier to batch out several of the bats at once. So I got a piece of paper large enough to lay on top of the pottery wheel and mark the edges and where the holes need to be. Then I could use that to make this template. Once I had tested the fit on the wheel and was happy with the alignment, I now knew where to set the pin in the circle jig to make the bats that will fit the wheel. For this batch of bats, I'm using some leftover MDF. This may not be the best choice of materials since some MDF can absorb water and then start to warp, but I plan to cover these with varathane and hope that keeps them from soaking up the water and deforming. I first need to cut a chunk of this MDF down to be just a bit bigger than my template. And if ever there was a case for a better dust collection, cutting MDF with the miter saw is it. MDF is really dusty and someday soon I hope to do something about my lack of dust collection in the shop. Now I just need to locate the center of the boards. To do that, I run a ruler from one corner to the other and then draw a line. Then do the same thing from the other corners. Where the pencil lines meet is close enough to the center for me. Next I'll drill a small hole in the middle, but not all the way through. This is just for the pin that sits in the circle jig. It's ready to cut now, so I can just set the pin into the correct hole on the circle jig and start cutting. That worked out pretty well. There are a lot of ridges in the cut, but I think next time I'll use a thinner blade and those will be greatly reduced, or even gone altogether. For this application, presentation is not so important, so the ridges are no big deal. I can use the template again to mark the spots for the holes. These holes shouldn't go all the way through, they just need to go in as far as the heads of these bolts will. And this drill bit is the perfect width for the task. So I set the depth stop on the drill and made some holes. As an added touch, I wanted to round over the top edge, just so it's a little smoother when working on the wheel. And I also get to make a lot more dust. The router table's dust collection is a little better than the miter saw, which has none, but not that much. When I was test fitting these on the wheel, I added some guidelines to the top before adding the varathane. I started with a batch of six of these bats, and my wife tells me they're working out very well so far. These just make it a lot easier to remove a large delicate item such as a plate from a wheel without squishing or deforming it. Click here to see more about how I made the circle jig. 